Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 54, day number. 3054, 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition day 54 on page 257 you will find example 2.9.3 at the very bottom of the page, example 2.9.3 dealing with what is known as absolute value function. Let's take a look at it, let's see what it is. Absolute value function is exactly what it says, it's a relationship between two variables, traditionally x and y, so here we, here we have a function, here we have y, which is a function of x, which is a function of x, which is a very fancy way of saying that the value of y somehow depends on x. But so far, how it depends on x is not specified. So we're going to go on and tell, uh, tell people how the value of y depends on x. y happens to be equal to the absolute value of x. Absolute value of x. Now, absolute value, as we already know, simply means that when x is when x is positive one, the absolute value of x of course is just one. When x is negative one, it is also going to be one. That's what absolute value means. When x is two, absolute value is two obviously. When when is negative two, it is also two. I, I know I'm being childish. This is too simple. So that's what it is. It's an absolute value of x. Which what does it mean? Which means that if you were to plot the equation, if you were to plot this function, here are values for x and y. When x is zero, we can clearly see when x is zero y is going to be 0. But when x is either positive 1 or negative 1, it doesn't matter whether it's positive 1 or negative 1, the, y, the value of y, which is what this is, absolute value of x equals y equals absolute value of x, whether, whether x is positive 1 or negative 1, y is just going to be absolute, y is just going to be 1. Whether x is positive 1 or negative 1, the value of y is 1. Similarly, when, when x is either positive 2 or negative 2, y is equal to 2. When x is positive 3 or negative 3, y is equal to 3, and so on and so forth. Let's see what it looks like if we want to plot it. It's very simple, very straightforward. Here's our x and y axis. When x is 0, y is 0, it starts at the, at, at, at the right of the origin. When x is positive 1 or negative 1, y is going to be 1. So there, is a, there are two points we just located. When x is positive 1, or negative 1, y is 1. When x is positive, when x is positive 2 or negative 2, y again is 2. And so on and so forth. Since it's a straight line, we only need two points. We already had two points here. I was just doing the third one just to elaborate here. But that's what it looks like. This is this is the shape of the absolute value function. It's a v-shaped function. This is what it looks like. Let's play with it a little bit. We're going to play with it a little bit. We're going to do something to it. What happens? What happens if it, y instead of being absolute value of x, what if we are told that y is equal to absolute value of x plus 3? What would it do? Well, what it does is by adding 3 to the outside, what it does is that for each given value of y, listen very carefully in this function here now, for each given value of, rather, for each given value of x, for each given value of x, now y is going to be 3 more than before. For example, before when x was 0, y was 0, which is still, oh sorry, when before when x was 0, y was 0. Now, let's give, let's give this function a different name because we can't have the same name. We cannot call it this f of x because f of x was absolute value of x. Let's call it g of x because it's a different function. We cannot give it the same name. So this here represents the f of x. Now let's plot the g of x. When we do the g of x, which, which is absolute value of x plus 3, which is what y equals to here, when, when x is 0, when x is 0, y is going to be equal to 0, absolute value of 0, which is 0 plus 3, is 3, you see? For each, 
for each given value of x, for each given value of x, y is just going to be 3 more than before. Before, when x was positive 1, we cannot do positive, positive 1 and negative 1 together. We're going to have to separate them. We're going to have to separate them. Before, when x was 1, y was 1. But now, when x is 1, y is going to be 1 plus 3. It's 4. And so on and so forth. Before, when x was 2, y was 2. Now, it's going to be 5. And so on and so forth. So, what's going to happen? When x was 0, uh, y was 0 before. This is the f of x. Now, when x is 0, y is going to be 3. Before, when x was 1, y was 1. Now, when x is 1, y is going to be 4. Y is going to be 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right here. Before, when x was 2, y was 2. Now, instead of being 2, it's going to be 5. Perhaps you're making too much fuss out of it. There we go. So this is our this is our positive side. And negative side is going to be the same thing. The negative side is going to be the same thing. Let's look at negative. Watch what happens. Before when x was negative 1, y was 1. Now what's going to happen? Now what's going to happen? Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is just going to be 1. Plus 3, again it's 4. Same as before. Before when x was negative 1, y was 1. Instead of being 1, it's going to be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. You see? It's the same shape. It's the same, same shape as before. What does it do? Well, it does exactly what we just said. Because, because of the fact, because of the fact, this is this green one, is our g of x. Because of the fact that for each given value of x, y is 3 more than before, all it does is that you, all it does is that you pick up your graph, this graph that is sitting here, we pick it up, this graph that is sitting here before, we just pick it up and we lift it 3 units, that's all. We lift it up and let shift it 3 units, that's all. Now let's do another transformation. Let's do a different transformation, okay? This is going to be a different transformation, I'm going to erase everything. Let's see what happens now. What happens, what happens, if instead of being like this, if we had put the positive 3 under the absolute value sign, what does it do, what does it do to the graph now? Let's take a look at it, shall we? Watch what happens. If we put if we put if we put 3 inside the absolute value sign, what it does is that before now when I say before, we're talking about f of x. This is the before part. So let's put down the before part here. This is the before. And we can no longer call it g of x. The g of x was a different function. We can have to give it a new, different name. Let's call it h of x. Each function in a given problem has to be given a distinct name. If two different problems, of course, you can call it the same thing. In the two different problems, two different functions, two different problems, you can still call them f of x. It doesn't matter. But if you're doing one same problem, one problem, and you're dealing with more than one function, you must give them distinct name. f of x, g of x, h of x, l of x, k of x, you understand? So on and so forth. For some strange reason, letter i is not used to name a function. No, it's letter o. It's just, just, just a convention. You'll never see i of x, f of x, h of x, g of x, l of x, k of x, and so forth. So h of x, that's what this is. So the before part is this one. y is equal to g of x, or oh sorry, f of x rather, that was our beginning part. And that looks something like this. This is the before part, you understand? Don't get confused. So whenever I say, whenever I use the word before, we're talking about this one. So before, when x was 0, y was 0. Now, ask yourself, ask yourself in this function, y is equal to absolute value of x plus 3, which is what we're dealing with here in h of x. When is y going to be 0? Before, one more time. This is the before part. This is this part right here. Before, when x was 0, y was 0. Ask yourself, when is y going to be 0 now? Well, y is going to be 0 here when x is negative 3. You see? When x is equal to negative 3, when x is equal to negative 3, negative 3 and positive 3, which is going to give us y is equal to 0. 
So instead of graph sitting here at the origin when x is 0, y is 0 before, now x is going to be, now y is going to be 0 when x is negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Let's ask the next question. Before, before, when x was 1, y was 1. Ask yourself, when is y going to be 1 in this new function? y is going to be 1, when is y going to be equal to 1? We have plus 3 here, we want 1 out of the whole thing. What do we need to do? We need to put a negative 2 here. Because a negative 2 and a positive 3 is going to give us y equal to 1. So one more time, before, y was 1 when x was 1. Now, y is going to be 1 when x is negative 2. When x is negative right here, when x is negative 2, y is going to be 1. Just one more. Before, when x was 2, y was 2. When is y going to be 2 now? If you wanted it to be 2, when is y going to be 2? We want, we want 2 out of this whole thing. We have a positive 3. We need to put a negative 1 here. A negative 1 and a positive 3 is going to give us 2. So y is going to be 2 now. y is going to be 2 now when x is negative 1 y is going to be equal to 2 when x is negative 1. As you can clearly see, negative 1 and a positive 3 is going to give us 2. Right here, negative 1. y is going to be 2 when x is negative 2. Do you understand? Before, I'm going to continue with the before thing, before the logic. Before, y was equal to 1, if you remember, when x was also negative 1. When x was negative 1, y was 1 because the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So when x was negative 1, we take absolute value of it, we get positive 1. y was 1 when x was negative 1. Now, y is also going to be negative, y is also going to be 1 when x is when x is negative 4. Why? Because a negative 4 and a positive 3, negative 4 and a positive 3 gives us negative 1. And the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So before y was 1 when x was negative 1, now it turns out y is equal to 1 when x is negative 4. Right here, negative 4. See, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and x is, x is 1. I'm not going to continue doing it. If you do it yourself now, you'll find that when x is negative 5, negative 5 and a positive 3 is going to give you negative 2, and absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Negative 5 is right here. What do you notice? What do you notice? Okay. Here's what we notice. Let me first plot it. There we go. That's what the graph looks like. The same as before. It's the same graph as before, but it's shifted. It is shifted three units to the left because the graph before looked like this. The graph, original graph, f of x, this f of x here, looked like this. When x was 0, y was 0. When x was 1, y was 1. When x was 2, y was 2. When x was negative 1, y was 1. When x was negative 2, y was 2. Before, the graph was like this. It's the exact same graph. Nothing has changed. Its shape has not changed at all. You simply shift it by 3 units. Instead of sitting at 0, Instead of sitting as 0, it is sitting as negative 3. This is the part where people get confused sometimes because it is a little counterintuitive. It is a little counterintuitive as to why would you shift the graph to the left when I can clearly see that it's positive 3. Shouldn't positive 3 shift it to the right? No. Positive 3 shifts it to the left. And if you, if you ever get confused, ask yourself one very simple question. One very simple question will tell you where to, where to set the graph. Ask yourself before y was 0 when x was 0. Now, what does the x need to be in order for y to be 0? Well, in order for y to be 0, in order for the y to be 0, x needs to be negative 3, right here. In order for the y to be 0, 
x needs to be negative 3 because negative 3 and positive 3 is going to give us 0. So before it was fitting a 0, 0, when x was 0, y was 0. Now if you want y to be 0, x needs to be negative 3. There you go, there's your answer. x needs to be negative 3 when y is 0, for, in order for y to be 0, well, which means it must shift from here to here, not the, not the other way. Do you understand? It will be the other way if, if it were absolute value of x minus 3, which I'm not going to do all over again. Do you understand? That's, that's the, shift to the shift to the left whenever you add something to the function. This is no different, this is no different, absolutely no different than what we saw when we were dealing with parabola. Let's look at a couple of parabolas very quickly. I'm going to erase all of this thing very quickly. A couple of parabolas. Here's the original parabola here. Here's the standard parabola sitting at 0, 0, which is simply y is equal to x squared. And what happens if you were to add something to it? If I were to add 3, 3, 3 to it, if you were to, instead of x, instead of y being equal to x squared, if it were x squared plus 3, what would happen? You would simply shift it up 3 units, 1, 2, 3. For each given value of y, or so rather, sorry, for each given value of x, for each given value of x, y is going to be 3 more than before. As you can see, we are adding 3 to each, each value, as, whatever the value was before, we are adding 3 to each one of them. So for each given value of x, y is 3 more than before. So we shift the entire parabola up by 3 units. But what do we do if we have something like this? Instead of being 3 there, instead of being 3 outside, what if 3 were inside the square sign? Well, this is very different. This is, we are dealing with a different situation. Which what happens? Before, it was like this. It was sitting at 0, 0. Standard parabola, nothing to it, nothing fancy. y is equal to x squared. Before, when x was 0, y was 0. Now ask yourself, ask yourself a simple question. What does x need to be in order for, it, in order for y to be 0 now? In this case. In this case, in order for y to be 0, in order for y to be 0, x needs to be negative 3. A negative 3 and a positive 3 will give us y equal to 0. You see that? That tells us that before, when x was 0, y was 0, it was sitting at the origin. Now it's the same parabola, but it's shifted 3 units to the left, even though we are adding 3 to it. For y to be 0, x has to be negative 3. There we go. 1, 2, 3 is the same thing, which is going to lift it up and shift it three units to the left. Same exact thing that we're dealing with here. Do you understand? Now let's move on to the next complication. I know this video is getting to be a little bit too, too much, but let's move on to the next complication. Which is, what happens? We're done with all of this thing. So again, we are back to our f of x. Our f of x looks something like this. f of x was equal to y, which was simply absolute value of x. So we had f of x, then we had g of x, we have h of x, let's call it l of x, the new function. What if instead of being, what if y instead of being equal to absolute value of x, what if it happened to be two times that? What would that do? Again, it's very straightforward. It's very straightforward. Why is it very straightforward? Because now, for each given value of y, for, so rather, for each given value of x, y is going to be twice as much. Whatever y used to be, whatever the y used to be for a given value of x, y is now going to be twice as much because we have two times absolute value of x. That's all. So, very quickly, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. That's what it looked like before. What happens now? What happens now is that now it is still going to sit at the origin. Why is it still going to sit at the origin? Because we can clearly see we can clearly see that when x is 0, y is going to be 0. So it starts out in the region as before. But what happens when x is either positive 1 or negative 1? 
when x is either positive 1 or negative 1, y will be 2. I'm not going to do it out here, it's very simple, it's 2 times 1 is 2. So, when x is either positive 1 or negative 1, y is 2. When x is either positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be 4. 3 and 4. When x is either positive 3 or negative 3, y instead of being 3 is going to be 6. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. What do you notice? What we notice is that the parabola has gone on a very strict diet. He's skinny. He has lost weight. How does parabola go about going on a diet? Well, he multiplies, he puts the whole number coefficient in front of it, itself. And that's his idea of going on a diet. I'm looking for the red pen here. It is the same parabola, but it is skinnier. It's the same parabola, but it is skinnier. Because y takes on twice as much value for each given value of x. Let's do the last thing. What would have happened instead of being half, had it, instead of being two, had it been one half? Instead of taking a, taking a whole number coefficient, what if the coefficient happened to be a fraction? Let's find out, shall we? Watch what happens. Again, it's going to say it's zero, zero, because when x is zero, y is zero. But before, when x was one, when x was one, y was one. Now, when x is one, y is just going to be half, because it's half times one. Right here. Let's do it in an entirely different color if I can find something. I have a green color. I don't know how well you can see the green color. So when x is 1, y is going to be half. When x is negative 1, y is going to be half. When x is 2, when x is positive 2 or negative 2, absolute value of positive 2 or negative 2 is 2 and 2 times half is 1. So when x is positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be 1. There we go. Again, it's the same parabola, but it has gained weight. Yes, he's fat. We have a fat parabola. There we go. He's fat. This guy was skinny. I don't know if skinny has two ends or one end, but you get the idea. He's fat. But don't call him fat because he will be offended. He is pleasantly plump. Do you understand? That's all we had for today. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.